Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Christmas Eve in just moments, Saturday, December 23rd, 1139 p.m. Mountain Time. Thomas Fire grows to the largest in California history since 1934 <laughs> at uh, 273,400 acres on Saturday, December 23rd. The Thomas Fire has become the largest wildfire in California history. We showed the NASA footage. The fire is basically out. There's no more excessive smoke that could be affecting the atmosphere. Um, just some small hot spots. They claim 65% containment. However, the large fire here in the jungle of Mexico is still burning, and it appears that fires have popped up in West Texas. A large one right here. Uh... The Alberta, British Columbia fires are huge. These are bigger than the entire Thomas fire and they're still burning. That's a heads up. If you guys are up, that's a really remote area. People probably don't know about that. Down here though, you're probably getting some of the smoke. Let me know if you're in that area. What's going on, please? Holiday weekend storm brings flooding, car crashes, and top of Christmas trees. I knew there were gonna be accidents. We predicted it last night and there they are. We won't be able to hear this, but we could probably just run it. It'll be fun to look at. Yes, it's snowing everywhere. Everywhere in the north. A stormy system stretching from the deep south to New England brought flooding to Tennessee. Wind gusts that toppled Nashville's 30-foot-high Christmas tree. That's a big boom. <laughs> we'll talk about that. That's a ho, ho, ho. Through Saturday, heavy rain will move through much of the busy I-95 corridor, Richmond, Virginia, New York City, Boston. This is cold rain, followed on the tail end by freezing temperatures. Should be an interesting Christmas as we descend into the grand solar minimum. As Santa and his sleigh come to town, so does extreme cold. Look at this dork stain. Look at this guy. Crossed eyes, weird glasses. Thin tie. This jacket's a little too young for him. Don't you think that button's about to blow? Getting stupid cold. Dressing stupid. <laughs> Dangerous wind chills. Christmas Eve snow. No, he's cute. He's all right. He's just a little bit tight. That's all. Hearts may be warm on Christmas Eve. Someone buy this guy a new jacket. But the day itself will be chilly with highs reaching only into the teens. This is for you guys in the Twin Cities. Teens for you. Buy that guy a jacket. Bitter cold will zap the Great Lakes. Let's turn off no school. Maybe we'll get a little more speed here. Oh, let's go back. That looks nice. Bitter cold will zap the Great Lakes region after Christmas. We have been colder than average for the last two weeks in Michigan in the Great Lakes region. Now an Arctic shot of air will take our temperatures down another notch. Whew. It's going to be cold. That's a heads up. Let's get out of here. We got a lot to talk about. This is uh, coming from the other hemisphere where it's summer and they're having a white Christmas. This is you, Victoria's white Christmas. Christmas Day weather photos. Areas of Victoria are experiencing a white Christmas with freezing conditions, bringing snowfalls to alpine regions in the summer. Christmas Eve, and it's snowing at Mount Mawson in Tasmania. Look at the guys right there with the smiley faces. Love it. Thank you for sending me that shot there. Strong winds and heavy rain set for more flooding. This is you, Norway. Flooding and landslides at low elevations along Norway's west coast on Saturday. Blizzards at higher elevations force closures of most mountain highways, disrupting travel plans for many trying to get home for Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Las Vegas Valley on track to break the no rainfall record. Guys, during the grand solar minimum, we have increased cosmic ray flux. Increased cloud nucleation. We have cold, damp conditions in areas where crop failures happen. And in other areas, they are robbed of the moisture because it all falls in different regions. This may be one of the regions that gets uh, robbed of moisture during the Grand Solar Minimum. Las Vegas, that's a heads up. Um, and if you learn the history about the Hopi and the Anasazi in the area that I live in here, in the Four Corners region, they migrated every 200 years back to Mexico and then back to the Four Corners region. And no one has any idea why they did that. 
Hmm. Maybe someday they'll look at an actual graph of temperature from the GISP to the Greenland ice cores and they'll find out about the grand solar minimums. Fuego volcano news and eruption today. There's a volcanic ash advisory for Fuego. We also have Kluchiskyov, Reventador, and Sabankaya all emitting ash today. More than 200 killed, 100 missing as tropical cyclone Tamblin hits the Philippines and these people are totally fluxed. Increased seismicity and rapid caldera inflation at Sierra Negra volcano in the Galapagos due to cosmic ray flux heating the muons in the subsurface. But this is a shallow shield volcano which shouldn't really be reacting. However, if we come and look at the historic eruptions here, these are during high cosmic ray flux times, except for the 2005, which was actually descending in a high cosmic ray flux down towards the end of cycle 23 in 2005. So these are all associated with cosmic ray flux. And this volcano is going to blow. Look at this linear progression. Up, up, up. Boom! And this is the Chilean eruption. Oh, I just erased it. Of Calbuco, which erupted on April, uh, the third week of April of 2015. We really need that JPEG back up. That's our boom. So we have volcanoes increasing, cosmic ray flux flooding, and we have the Galapagos about to blow at Sierra Negra. I'll leave you links to all of this as usual. Guys, if you don't know where the links are, they're down below where it says Oppenheimer Ranch to the left side under the video. There's a little gray area that says show more. Click that. You'll get all the links to this video. Here's the seismic map. The KP finally has reacted at zero. The lithospheric flexure anomaly is occurring, and we have increased seismicity worldwide, including this Arctic quake very rare. We've been having a lot of these in this past few months. This is a 4.9 way up in the middle of nowhere under the ice. We have an interesting earthquake here um, in Bernie, Missouri, associated with the New Madrid fault zone. This could have been due to deep well injection and fracking, but still that's a heads up there. And there was a 3.3 in San Martin, California that many people felt uh, yesterday, when we had no seismic activity above 2.5, the seismicity along the San Andreas was bumping, and it's bumping today. There's a lot of low-level activity popping off. These are just in the last few hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine earthquakes. Two or less. Now let's talk about the nonsense. Yesterday we covered how they said melting ice is causing more volcanic eruptions and they used an Ecuadorian volcano of all things, Reventador. Now they're talking here, this is coming from Newsweek, sleeping volcanoes in Iceland could awaken from the kiss of melting glaciers. Another total nonsense piece. And we'll just take you over here to Icelandic glaciers. I'll leave you links to this. And you can see that in the, since the uh, end of the mini ice age, almost no ice is being lost here in Iceland. The, just the average amount because of the global warming due to natural <laughs> climate cycles is causing minimal glacial loss. But what happens on a regular interval in Iceland, which is highly documented, is right here. And this is called glacial growth and they're called surges so these surges occur at recent uh, uh, periodic intervals one of the best known Icelandic surging glaciers Burukjol, a major outlet glacier had surges in 1810 1890 and 1963 and 4 now, I'm about to tell you something amazing right now and make a prediction that a surge in Iceland's glaciers is happening right now. And in by next year, we will have the numbers and the surge will be official. Now, the reason I know this, you're looking at it, 1810, 1890, 1963. 
And that's a big boom. So if we just come over to the data, here's 1810, Dalton minimum. Here's 1890, the beginning of the centennial minimum. And here's 1960, during this drop off of cycle, of cycle 19, down into the high cosmic ray flux period here, 1960. This, these are the glacial advances, the surges, 1810, 1890, 1963. 1810, Dalton minimum, cosmic ray flux. 1890, centennial minimum, cosmic ray flux. I just lost it. Sucks to be me. Arecibo is monitoring a potentially hazardous near-Earth asteroid. We've talked a lot about Comet 3200 Phaethon. Guys, if you don't know about Arecibo, it used to be the largest radio telescope in the world. But it has faced quite a few challenges over the last 10 years, including budget cuts, a funding crisis, and damage from Hurricane Maria. However, it's still functional. Now, the largest radio telescope anywhere now belongs to the Russian Rotan 600. But this Puerto Rican device is still an important asset for detecting dangers to our planet. And it's come back online. Luckily, in time for Phaethon to pass. And what you're looking at are the images of 3200 Phaethon taken by Arecibo. You'll notice straight away this dark hole in the end. And we're about to see an animation of 3200 Phaethon, which has successfully passed us by safely with just a few trailing fireballs. But it will be back. And in fact, it is on a collision course with Earth in 2073, I believe. Direct hit. But we have time to prepare, which is why they're taking such detailed pictures of this particular rock, which is 3.5 miles wide and clearly has a large hole in it right here, a crater of sorts that's rolling around with it. Pretty awesome that this is coming from a telescope that doesn't have a lens. This is all radio waves, radio emissions. I'll leave you links to this uh, tumbling GIF image. And I'll leave you links to the array. And let's talk about Chile's Calbuco volcano erupting the first time in more than 40 years. As we descend into the grand solar minimum, I believe that this volcano is the first volcano of the grand solar minimum. And that's a boom. I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Santa's coming. I can hear the sleigh bells.